Flair, you are the first one today. Good day, good evening. Bosse, good evening. Marilyn, Marilyn Rose, good evening. <clears throat> Victor Gundipe, welcome. Yet today, welcome. Let's begin to go and share immediately as we are coming in. Please go share the link. Adebayo, go share the link. Damilare, please go ahead and share the link. Akitade, go share the link. Welcome. Aniki Okoro, go share the link. Giwa, blessings. Tevita, Esther, uh, Reji, Oluwatoyi, uh, blessings. Welcome, everybody. Please go share the link. Go share the link as you're inviting other people. Geraldine, please go share the link and invite other people that wants to that might want to join us from Elayo, please go share the link. Uh, Rita, you want to go and share the link and invite somebody? Prince Dominic, Balogun, welcome from Manchester, Esther Ebonk, uh, Oshuko, Adwa, uh, Paul Eke, Agota Okoti, Omol Labake, Ben Afofori, Welcome everybody. Obi Ojima do is here as well. Yemi Magnolia Volker. Welcome. Ludovic Meli. Akim Latifu, Super Ego Hero. Condolence to you, Akim Latifu, for the passing away of uh, Stevie Keshin. St St Stephen Ketchy. Uh, Stephen Ketchy was my hero. He was my hero uh, as a player. And he's my, he was my hero as a, as a coach. But Nigeria lost one of the greatest football personalities of, of our country. So you are a super ego player. And uh, so uh, condolence to you. And it's because he was like a father to all of you guys. Well, welcome everybody. Here we go again. Are you ready to take off? Are you ready to go? Uh, I see that people's lives are already changing. So, some people are already writing me and uh, they are already testifying about how these teachings are changing their lives. And uh, one person that wrote me said uh, he went to try one of the principles that I spoke to you people about. Uh, you know, I spoke that, I told you people one day that if you invest, if you save only $100 a month and you persistently or consistently put that $100 uh, in an investment that would yield you only 10% per year. So, but if you are consistent about it, if you are, you know, you always put another $100 in that investment on a regular basis. You don't just leave $100 and expect it to grow to become a million. That will never happen. There is a principle here. It is only time the durability, the duration of time that makes, that builds wealth. And number two things that build wealth, there are two things that build wealth faster than anything else. That is the duration of time. You have to live, you know, you have to invest and let money grow for a duration of time. That is one. No, the, number two things that really grow wealth is persistence. You have to be persistent in putting that same hundred dollars again. You don't just do it one time. You do it, let's say you start from January. You have to be putting every month that hundred dollars that you have accumulated. You have to keep on putting it every single month. In February, that's in, like in January, February, March, April, May, and all that through the end of the year. And you have to do that for the next, I said, 10 years. That if you just save hundred dollars from your candies, from your you know coffee, from all the money that you are wasting every day, and you just economize, and there are a lot of areas where we could economize. You could economize from different places, and then you invest that money, that hundred dollars. You are investing it in a particular project that is giving you only ten percent returns a year. If you, it's only giving you 10% a year, it will take you less than 10 years. I said 10 years for you to become a millionaire in US dollars. Then this guy said, he, that made him thinking, that brought him thinking. And he began to, to, to think and said, okay, if that is true, because he's a, he's a, he's a computer uh, scientist and a consultant. So he went and went to his computer and started doing the, the calculations. So it's, he wrote to me and said, uh, the calculation took him to confirm what I said. 
that you know if you are actually doing investment of hundred dollars every month uh, and you are consistent about it, that the only thing is that you will become a millionaire not in ten years like Pastor Sunday has said, but you will become a millionaire in six years. In six years. So if you are persistent, so it is. It is, uh, but but you know you can even become a millionaire much faster than that. Like I said this morning, that if you are putting that hundred dollars each, you know, uh, and you are persistent about it, but if you are not just, mm, let's say, if you are not just, there are two ways you could even make become a millionaire faster than six years. Uh, if you are putting that hundred dollars consistently every month for six years, and then you put it not in. In, in, in bonds or in shares or in stock exchange where you are just getting 10% or you, are, you didn't just put that in, in bank or in a place where you get 10%. 10% is very small. 10% return in a year is very, very small. So that, you know, but if you are going, if you put it in a business, even you yourself can come up with a business that will give you a return of more than 10% a year. You know, somebody, I was talking to another person today who is also listening to me. And the person who told me this testimony, this story, who wrote me this letter is here now. I just saw his name. He's listening to me right now. You know, that six years is what it takes. And then he calculated it. And, and I also have calculated that in my book here. In my book here, that if you only save, you know, $10, $100 a, year, a month and you are able to multiply it consistently, that you become a millionaire in 10 years. I have the calculations here. So if you don't have this book, money will make you rich. You might want to have it. You might want to have it. It will help you. Well, uh, yeah. So, but let me tell you that instead of you waiting for seven, six years to become a millionaire, you can actually make it faster. You could become a millionaire much faster. How do you do this? You could take that money and put it in a, in a venture that is going to yield you not 10% uh, in a year. I'm sure many of us, all of us know people who are making money, not who are making much more than 10% returns in their money, actually for their money in a year. Actually, I personally believe that there is no normal businessman in his own right senses that he will be doing business just to make 10% in a year. That is what banks give you. And banks, you know, they are stealing your money anyway. So any business, anybody that is a, in his right mind and is doing normal business should be making nothing less than 30% a year, 30% returns in a year. And you know a lot of those people who are having 30% returns in their, in their business. So if you are, you know, if you every year you are partnering with someone like that, that is making 30% return or at least giving you 30% return for, 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 the, for the business, if they give you 30% return and if, some people will even be willing to give you 50% returns in a year or, you know, maybe it's even higher in some cases. If that happens, let's say, let's just say 30%. If they are giving you 30% return for your investment every year, it means that you are making, you are going to make that $1 million faster. You are going to make it not in six years as he had calculated. You could make it in five years or in four years or, or maybe in, in, in three years, actually. So you know, that, that is one way to quicken your process of becoming a millionaire in less than uh, six years. Then another way you can quicken the process of becoming a millionaire from $100. From $100. From $100, you could still become a millionaire uh, faster than six years by, mm, by trying to in, always, by giving yourself a target that you could start with $100, but you are not going to stop with $100. So the more you save and the more you accumulate and save from other uh, you know, you know, things that I've taught you this week, you are economizing, economizing and saving. And you, you can put yourself a target that, okay, I will be going from $100 investment in a month to $200 in a month. Then maybe you get $300. So every month you'll be putting $300 consistently or $200 consistently. Or you'll be putting $400, $500 consistently. If you are going to be improving it consistently like that, then you will not need six years to become a millionaire. Even if you are getting 10% returns or 30% returns, you can become a millionaire faster, maybe in three years or two years. So it is easy, and I've calculated it in this book, like I said, 
you know, that you can become a distant, anybody can become a millionaire and you can, you know, calculate all the figures are here in the book. Money will make you rich. And you can, if you can, if you can see and do the calculation yourself that, you know, if you start with $100 a year, you can actually make, uh, become a millionaire. Any human being can be, you don't even need to be a Christian to become a millionaire. Any person that follows the laws of, you know, of money can become a millionaire, you know, within a very short time. So, and I've talking, I've spoken to a few people uh, this week. People are writing me uh, to my personal email and they are thanking me and saying, you know, they are grateful. They've started changing their lifestyle and, uh, and, and you know, they, their eyes are opening. Some people, you know, you know, yeah, that is called, you know, that is the person who did the calculation who is writing now. Savings plus compounding interest plus time equals wealth. Yes. And consistent, you know, time and consistency. So you are saving the money first, then, you know, then you are investing it into compound interest. Then, you know, you put, give some time, uh, you know, for it. Oh, Dwight, you, you know, Sam Caster. Sam Caster is a great man. How are you, Dwight? Help me great Sam Caster. You know, he's one of the guys that taught me a lot about some of these principles. So, you know, Sam Caster is a great businessman from, uh, from, uh, Texas. And, you know, he's, he's a great man of God as well. So, so uh, what I'm saying is that every Christian, every human being could become a, a, a millionaire if you know the principles. But what is the topic we are talking about today? The topic we are talking about today is, don't forget, stop spending the money you don't have to buy what you don't need <laughs> to impress those who don't really care about you, who don't really care. So stop spending the money you don't have to buy what you don't need <laughs> to impress people who don't care. And uh, this is my third, this is the third part of this teaching. And I've already spoken to you about the first part and the second part. What did I do? What I did is that I took that uh, one statement, broke into three parts. I broke it into three parts. The first part of the statement says, don't spend the money you don't have. And two days ago, or yesterday, maybe I think yesterday, I spoke on that. Don't buy, you know, I mean, don't, don't spend what you don't have. Don't spend the money you don't have. So that is the first part, and we got that already. If you are not here to hear that first part, don't spend the money you don't have. Go to my YouTube page, Sunday Adelaide Official, and you'll be able to see it there. Or you could go to, uh, you know, that same Facebook where you are right now. Go to the video section. If you go to the video section, you'll be able to do the same thing. You'll be able to see the video there. So I've spoken on that. Sp stop spending the money you don't have. And number two, this morning, I also spoke on the second part of this message, which is to buy what you don't need. To buy what we don't need. And I've spoken about that. Stop buying what you don't need and how you can stop buying what you don't need and how we actually engage in that kind of exercise, buying what we don't, what we don't need. And so please go ahead and as we are listening now, don't forget to keep on sharing the, the link. And the way to share it, by the way, uh, somebody just told me that you don't need to go back to your timeline to share the link, that you just need to uh, look into the, to the uh, left side of your screen. If you look into the left side of your screen and you press it, you will see that there is a figure of a man and... Uh, and you know, and, uh, and another sign of plus or something, a plus sign. So if you press that plus sign and press that plus sign, it will open and, and show you the option to share. So you can share it without going back to your, to your, to your timeline. So press the, uh, the sign of the plus sign and then the arrow sign and on your left side of the screen. And that will make you enable you to sign, to, to, to share the button without going to, to the front, to the front page anymore, to the timeline. Anyway, so tonight, what we are doing right now is that we are going to be talking about the third part of this of this message, which is to impress those who don't really care. To impress those, you know. Let's let's face the truth, my friends. Let's press, let's face the truth. Will you admit it? <laughs> most of us will not admit that. Okay, most of us will not admit that. Most of the expenses that we get ourselves involved in and most of the things that we spend money on most of them one way or the other have a way of uh you know of of 
trying to uh, you know to brag to brag and to to show off you will have a way of trying to show off uh, for before people and most of our expenses sometimes are about showing off most of our expenses sometimes are about showing off some of us just want to show up we want to show off to before our friends, we want to show off in our society, we want to show off before people, uh, you know, who we know, or who, 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 who we, uh, we deal with people we live with, and uh, we want, just want to let people know that we have arrived. We want people to know that we have arrived. We want people to get impressed. We want people to feel uh, that you know we are uh, we are there that we we can afford this or we can afford that. That you know that that we too are, are, are belong. We belong to the upper class or to the middle class. And you know that is just the truth. Most of the time, when we spend money that we don't need. When we want to buy a house that we don't, we cannot really afford. The reason we want to buy that house is for because, of course, we want to be comfortable on one hand. But more than that, we want everybody to rejoice with us. <laughs> we want everybody to celebrate with us, and we want them to know that well, I am now in the club of a house owner. I am no more a tenant. I am now a a house owner. Yes, you can always become a house owner, especially if you first of all make money to work for you. But why should you become a house owner by selling yourself to to, to slavery um, to Uncle Sam? Why should you become a house owner for, by selling yourself into slavery into the system of this world? Why should you become a house owner by joining this rat race? Why should you become a, 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 a house owner by mortgaging your future? Why should you do that? You can still become a house owner by doing in the right way by getting money to work for you and setting yourself free to work for God by you know getting money to work for you why by you go after your 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 uh, your your destiny you fulfill your calling and you go after you know fulfilling your 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 goal in life so that is much all those things, that is much more in, in, important that is much more uh, valuable to fulfill your goal and your destiny is much more valuable than to try to you know to impress somebody else so uh, uh, the idea I'm trying to say is that of course you know people will always notice what you have and uh, you know what what is in your hand but still that is not the most important thing you should not be motivated by that you know like i said some people you know somebody is actually writing now instead of buying a chanel bag for five thousand euros i choose to invest the cash in a business yes that is what volker says uh volker is saying you know you know don't show off you know i mean i cannot ever i can never understand maybe i will maybe i'll understand one day one day I, I used to say I could never understand how people will wear suits for one thousand dollars, and then somebody came and gave me a suit for one thousand dollars. I didn't want to wear it because I'd I had said I don't understand. I, I can never understand. <laughs> but they, they gave me the second one, then the third one. Then I had to begin to wear suits for one thousand dollars. But you know, I would never buy. Use, I would never have used my money to buy. It. But somebody just did that because that was what they were dealing with. I mean, dealing in the same thing with a bag for five thousand dollars. I don't understand that. But some people do that. Some people do that. And uh, I used to, I also don't understand how people will be wearing wristwatch for $40,000, for $20,000. I, I think I can never understand that. Maybe I will understand one day, but now I can't understand. Well, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, let's stop the show off game. Let's, let, let's just, you know, let's just, uh, you know, let's, let's, for, first of all, make money work for us. Of course, if you have, if you are a, you're a billionaire, maybe, maybe, I don't know, but, but still, even if you are a billionaire, there are people dying in Africa, people dying in Asia, people dying in India. I think it, that money might do better to go get some food for some children who are dying in some continents, but who knows, who knows, who knows. Well, well uh, the idea really is, most of the time when we have to borrow money and spend money that we don't have to buy what we don't need, most of the time we want to impress people. We want to impress people. And the funny thing about people is that <laughs> if you try to impress people, you get into much more trouble. You put yourself into many more trouble than you could imagine. You put yourself into much more trouble than you could bargain for. Anybody that is living his life to impress other people, ooh, they end up regretting it. Because somebody is going to take advantage of it. Bet, I bet you. I bet you. Someone is going to take advantage of what you are trying to do. Someone will notice that you want to show off. Someone will notice that you want to, you know, use your money to, to brag. And they are going to go after you. And what they are going to do? I know what they are going to do. 
Yeah, and I will tell you some of the things that they are going to do. Now, number one. Whenever we want to impress people, you know, those people, we take advantage of us. How do they take advantage of us? First of all, they will come and begin to hate you. If they don't hate you, because you think you want to impress them. But you know the human nature? People will begin to envy you. They will begin to jealous you. Have jealousy towards you. And once they begin to have jealousy towards you, they begin to envy you, then they go beyond that. If you're not careful, if, you, if you're still trying to go and trying to, be, to impress them and try to do all that, they'll go after you. They'll go from envying you to hating you. And if they have the opportunity to get back at you and even hurt you and make you things painful for you, they will do it. They will do it. So trying to try, I mean, trying to impress people could be expensive sometimes. It could be very costly. It could be very costly. You know, in, in this our country, in Ukraine, where I'm living right now, there is a saying that says that nothing, uh, nothing, no, no, uh, nothing frustrates and angers uh, a Ukrainian, you know, maybe not just Ukrainian, maybe this is uh, for everybody, but nothing frustrates uh, some people like, you know, the success of his neighbor. <laughs> you know, the way that it, it says, they say it in Ukraine is very funny, that nothing frustrates and angers, nothing makes a Ukrainian mad as the success of his neighbor. So when you think you are successful and you are big and you are trying to, you know, show off, you don't know that it's bringing a lot of frustration and anger to your neighbors. <laughs> and the, 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 the neighbors, you think they are going to be happy for you? Well, I used to be as naive myself. I used to be as naive. I used to be as that naive. Yeah, yeah. I used to think that, um, you know, when you are successful, that no more people are supposed to be happy for you. you I used to think that somebody will celebrate with me, yeah. So I used to think that uh, when I come out with all my success... <laughs> that people will be running out down the street to rejoice with me. <laughs> well, that is not the way things are. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe a few people will do that, but not too many people know what Paul said, that rejoice with those who rejoice. Most people don't rejoice with those who rejoice. Those people get mad at those who rejoice. <laughs> I remember I was in a restaurant, even in America, in America where people celebrate success, where people ce celebrate achievements. And we were in a restaurant with some friends and, you know, we were so happy and we were, uh, I, think, I think we were laughing and we were really happy and, you know, enjoying ourselves. And then one old man came to me and said, he began to say all kind of things that you nigger, you do this, this, this. You have to get out of this country. Why are you laughing so loud? Or why are you so, you know, why are you, what makes you happy? What do you think about yourself? Why, why, what are you doing here? We're going to throw you out of this restaurant. We're going to... So, you know, people are not always happy with those who are happy. People are, don't always rejoice with those who rejoice, you know. So that's just human nature. People are envious. People are envious. If you don't know about it, you better remember that now. <laughs> Keep that in your heart. Keep that in your heart. So maybe those people you are trying to invest, I mean, you are trying to impress. Maybe they are the ones trying to kill you. Maybe they are the ones trying to get at you. So instead of trying to impress them, just impress yourself and let God be impressed with you. That's all. If God is impressed with you, you don't love anybody to be impressed with you anymore. Because those people you are trying to think that you are impressing, they are actually praying that something wrong will, get, something will, will go wrong with you. They are actually silently wishing that something will go wrong with you. And uh, that just, I mean, not everybody, not everybody, of course, but some people are there who are like that. I'm sure you'll find somebody like that in every country. So in our culture here, they said, uh, you know, nothing frustrates, nothing angers, nothing, nothing uh, makes a Ukrainian mad like the success of his neighbor, okay? And uh, then it says also, the second part of that, the second part of that says, and also nothing uh, makes a Ukrainian happy. Nothing makes a Ukrainian happy <laughs> like the failure of his neighbor like the failure of his neighbor. So some people are actually happy when bad things happen to you. Some people are actually happy when bad things happen to you, you know. You know, it's not a beautiful thing, it's not pretty, and it's not too, it's not one of the best things to talk about, but 
you know, I think I'm, I guess I must talk about it so that somebody knows that this is the kind of world we live in. This is the kind of world we live in, you say. So, so stop trying to impress people who will later on come to stab you in the back. They will come and stab you in the back. They will come and put knife in your, in, your, in your ribs, you see. They will come and put some knives in your ribs just because you are trying to show off that you are successful. So, so, so that's why most successful people, the, the ones who are really successful, the ones who are really successful, they don't, they don't, they don't have time for all that kind of thing. They, they, they know how to hide their riches. And that's why some people actually say, wealth likes silence. Wealth likes silence. You know, Volker, I think Volker should be a German, he's saying not only Ukrainians think like that, it happens everywhere. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. Just Ukrainians like to laugh at themselves, so they, they come up with that. Well, uh, the idea is that when you're trying to show off, it might end up being too costly for you. It might end up being too costly for you. Yeah, it might end up being too costly for you. <laughs> yeah, it might end up being extremely costly. Thank God if you don't lose your life at the end of the day. And thank God if nothing bad happens to your family. <laughs> you heard of the kidnapping? You heard of kidnapping? Some people kidnap. Some people kidnap just because you are successful. You heard of whole, uh, Robin Hood? Robin Hood? It's all about that. They want to steal from you if you are successful and give to the poor and so, the so-called poor. Well, that's just that's the way life is. That's the way life is. Yeah. So wealth like silence. Wealth like silence. Wealth like silence. Yes. So anyway, you know what am, I, what am I talking about? I'm saying don't spend don't spend money that you don't have to buy things you don't need to impress people who don't really care. People don't care. If they care, they only care about themselves. I'm sorry. They only care about themselves. I'm sorry. You think the whole world is working about thinking about you? Hmm? That's the next point. It's a mistake. We make a mistake when we think that, um, you know, Bragan Oken is asking, do you have internships, Pastor Sunday? Yeah. You can come for internship. You can come for internship. We'll be happy to have you. It's people come here all the time. People come here all the time. So you, you are welcome. Anyway, what am I trying to say? The next point is that, um, you know, when you're trying to show off and to impress people, that, people with your money or with the things you're buying for yourself, well, you think people are going to, you know, go home happy and, you know, go and dance and go and start a party because things are working out for you and they're not really working out for them? <laughs> Well, 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 well. I'm sorry. Nobody's going to start a party in their home because you bought a house and they don't have a house. <laughs> the truth of life is that, the truth of life is that most people don't really think much about you. They don't care about you. Most people only think about themselves. Most people uh, just think about themselves. Most people just think about themselves. That's just how, how real life is. Most people just think about themselves. They don't think about you. You know, they don't really care what, what happens to you. So, all the people you are trying to impress, they are not sitting at home and thinking, oh, how, how I like, how I, I, I'm enjoying the wealth of Billy. I am so happy for Billy. Let me tell you another thing that happens. Even if they discover that you have wealth and you have some money because you are showing off, and if they don't envy you, Maybe they are good people. Um, you know, the ne next tendency, the next tendency of what will happen is that they might not hem envy you or they might not try to hurt you, but they have other things in mind. People that you are showing off your wealth or you are showing off your money to, uh, you know, they will come back. You know what they come back for? Mm -hmm. I guess you know. <laughs> I know. I know what they come for. I know what they come for. When you're showing off that you have something, that's exactly what Solomon was talking about. That wealth has a way of flying away. <laughs> wealth has a way of developing wings and they just fly away. You know why they fly away? Because the people who get to discover that you have wealth, they get to know your address as well. And when they come to visit you, they don't bring more wealth. They come to visit you to ask for some money. They come to borrow money from you. They come to borrow money from you. 
So if you have some good neighbors or some good people in your country that don't, that don't envy your wealth or that don't uh, try to hurt you for your wealth, well, I know that even if they don't do that, there are some other things they could do. And top on that list of what they will do is they will come to ask for some change. To ask for them some change. They will not tell you you should give them money for free. You know how people are. They know if, you, they, if they try to ask you to give them money for free, that uh, you will say, why? Why? What are you doing? Why should I give you money for free? You go work. So people are smart. People are smart these days. <laughs> they will not ask you for money for free, but they will come and say, will you lend me some money? Will you lend me some money, please? Lend me some money. I have a crisis. Or I have somebody sick in the hospital. Or I have this business that I need some, just a little bit of money to complete. And, uh, you know, I know you could, I know you have it. They, you know, people become seers and prophets immediately. They begin to know what you have. And they know that you have it. They know you have it. And they know you can afford to give them. They don't care if you have a plan for your wealth, for your money or not. If you, you have something going on for you and you cannot afford it or you can afford it. They know for sure that you can afford it. So they come to you and come with so much confidence. And of course, some of them come with some tears, with some tears. I mean, they, they come crying, they come crying. They come, uh, you know, everybody wear their pity, pity, pity dress. They, 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 know, they wear their pity face. They wear their pity face and they come, uh, you, know, you know, in a very pathetic way. So that you don't have any option. No escape route for you. <laughs> no, no escape route for you. <laughs> You've got to pity them whether you like it or not. And they come and ask for money. You, you guess where your money has gone to? Most of you that, I'm, I'm sure some of you that are listening to me now, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You, some of you, you used to have some money, and you know where those, that money are, right? You know, you know where those monies are right now, huh? You know where those monies are. Mm -hmm. They are in some, they are somebody's pocket. That's just the way, you know, just as much as you are struggling, and you are thinking and working hard to make money, so also there are a lot of people that are devising ways and means of getting that money from your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. They are working hard to get that money out of your pocket, my dear. Mm -hmm. And if they are going to cry to get it, they will weep and cry and shed tears to make sure that they get some of that money from your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. If they need to borrow from you, well, they will come and tell you all kinds of stories just to get you to separate, to part with your money, to part with your money, to part with your money. So there are people busy all, all day long, day and night, coming up with strategies of how to get some money out of your pocket. That's just the way life is. That's just the way life is. So what I'm saying is, don't use, don't, I mean, don't use, I mean, don't, 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 uh, don't spend money that you don't have to buy things that you don't need and to impress people who don't really care. When you try to impress people, you make announcements about yourself. You make yourself pop. You make uh, some popularity, some cheap popularity that end up costing you a lot. Sometimes, sometimes it will cost you your life. Sometimes it will cost you your comfort. Sometimes it will cost you your peace. Sometimes it will cost you your money. Sometimes it will cost you much more than you could afford. Yeah, and because you don't, you know, you don't, you don't try to impress people. You don't try to impress people. Now, someone spoke today about Coco, I mean, about Chanel bag. Chanel bag that is costing 5,000 euro, that, you know, instead of buying Chanel bag that's costing 5,000 euro, you can put your money in investment. Well, let me talk about someone. The, that, let me talk about, let me talk, tell you some story about that lady, Chanel, Coco Chanel. Your Chanel bag and Chanel perfume that you are using and Chanel dress, you know, Chanel, or maybe I think it's a French name, so it's a French lady, so you, I think it's called Chanel. Now, that Chanel uh, company is, is a multinational uh, beauty company right now and cosmetics company. And, um, you know, many people are thinking that, that uh, you know, that's just a company, its name, but it's actually the name of the founder of that company. It was an old woman. She started that a company, the last one that is going viral, you know, worldwide, international now. Uh, Coco Chanel founded it when she was seventy-two, I think, maybe seventy-two or seventy-four. 
And, uh, you know, that means it's never changed. It's never late. It's never late for any one of us. So Coco Chanel says something that I like to quote so many times. And when I'm doing my training for people, I like to quote that lady. Huh? That lady is a lady with some <laughs> thick skin. She is a tough lady. She, you know, she, and if, I think this statement will make you, will let you to know how, you know, what makes her tick, what makes her tick. She says that, um, because, you know, and this is one of our famous, very famous statements. She said, I don't care because you are thinking that people, you want to impress people and that people will be thinking about you and rejoicing about you. And, and that is coming under public opinion. And you know, this statement that Coco Chanel made is about that kind of mentality. It's about public opinion. She said, I, you know, because everybody is always concerned about public opinion. Oh, what will people think about me? Let me dress well. Well, it doesn't, you know, people don't think, people don't care for you. They don't think about you. You know, then some of you say, okay, let me, be, you know, so that I will look respectable in the society. I cannot go to the street without this dress. Nobody is thinking about you. So Coco Chanel said, I don't care what you think about me. The most important thing is, I don't even think about you. I don't have time to think about you. So you think anything you want about me, for me, I don't, I don't even have time to think about you. So Coco Chanel, she's a tough lady, tough-skinned lady. I mean, she's, she's a thick-skinned lady because she said, I don't care what you think about me. The most important thing is, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I, don't, I don't even have time to think about you. I have something else to think about. <laughs> I have my dream to think about. I have my vision to think about. What do you think about that kind of lady? Is she not tough? I think she's tough. I think she's tough. I think she's tough. I don't care what you are thinking about me. I don't even care if you think about me or you don't think about me. Because I don't have time to think about you. I don't even care if you think or you don't think. So you think anything you want. I'm, the most important thing is that I'm not even thinking about you. I don't even know if you exist or you don't exist. I don't care whatever you think. Think anything with your head. The most important thing is that I'm not thinking about you at all. I am not thinking about you. I don't have time to think about you. I have something more serious to think about. I'm thinking about my destiny. I'm thinking about my vision. I'm thinking about my purpose. Hey, is, it not that, is that not a good option? Is that not a better option than to be worrying what people might be thinking about me? So because people will think I've finished school from, for five years now, I still don't have a car or I still don't have a house, so I must go and get credit on a loan and go and get a house that I cannot afford and be spending money I, cannot afford, I don't even have in the first place. Why should I be buying things that I don't need just because I want people to think well about me or to think good about me? You know, Coco Chanel way is the way to go. I don't care who thinks about me or whatever they think about me. I don't even care for it. I don't even know if they are there. I don't even think about it. Let them think anything they want about me. So when I, like I tell people, I don't even have, you see, I don't even have rich watch. I don't even have rich I don't wear a rich watch. So I don't wear a rich watch. I don't even have rings in my hand. Some people are so big about wearing things in their neck, in their hand, in their well, maybe it's good for them. Well, if it's not costing them money, maybe they could. Maybe. But, but I, you know, these are all facts. These are all things that, you know, they don't make who we are. They don't make who we are. You know, some people, you know, they, you know, they, 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 they just want to live their life according to other people's expectations. And, 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 and I like what Coco Chanel said. Don't, you know, people don't really, the truth is that people don't really care about you. People only care about themselves. People only care about themselves. Listen to that. You know, and, and this is scientifically proven. If you study psychology or you just, you know, they will tell you that most people, because some of, some of, sometimes I used to think like that. I used to think when I was uh, in high school, whenever I couldn't even stand up in my, in my classroom to, to answer a question. I couldn't even stand up in my classroom to tell what my name is. When I, whenever I stood, stood, stood up to say, my name is Sunday Adelaja, by the, by the time I say, my name is... <laughs> I would begin to shake and, and, and panic and, and shiver and you know, I couldn't even pronounce my name. Why? Because I was thinking that everybody's eyes were, were on me and they're all looking at me and, and, and you know, everybody's thinking about me that I was poor, that I was not handsome, that I was not good looking, that I was so dull. I have all kind of thoughts in my mind and I would think all of them are looking at me and I, you know what? You know, it is just much later in life that I discovered that, my God, how foolish I, I was I. 
how foolish I was. Nobody thinks about anybody else. The only thing people are thinking about, you know what people are thinking about most of the time? I used to think that most of the time people are thinking about me. <laughs> wow, big deal. <laughs> Why should I, where did I get that kind of you know, sense of importance from? That people are thinking about me? Am I so important that people would think about me? They don't even think about Obama talk less of me. <laughs> they don't even think about their president talk less of me. Well, but that's what, that's what most of us think. Inferiority complex makes us to think like that. That everybody's just thinking about you. But really? You want to know what people are thinking about most of the time? 75% of the time. That's the least figure. Some, in some cases, 95% of the time. People are thinking about themselves. You, you even think about it right now. What do you think about most of the time? You think you are thinking about your neighbor? Hmm? You're thinking about your, your, the girl across the street? <laughs> Is that what you're thinking about most of the time? Hmm? Are you thinking about the, the man across your, across, your, across your street? Is that the person you're thinking about most of the time? Are you sure? I'm not sure. I would not believe that story. Of course, most of the time you are busy thinking about yourself. You are busy thinking about your well-being. You are busy thinking about what you want to do with your life. You are busy thinking about your destiny. Who to marry? How many children to have? What to buy for your children? Where to live? What job to, make, to do? How to make money? You are busy thinking about yourself. That's the reality of life, my dear. So you think that if you are thinking about yourself all the time, then somebody else is sitting down in, them, in their houses and just thinking about you? Are <laughs> you kidding me? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. They are not thinking about you. They are not thinking about you. They are thinking about themselves. They are thinking about themselves. But sometimes, sometimes, if you really get people crazy, if you really get people tempted, if you really, you know, parade your wealth too much before people, then they begin to think about you a little bit. Just a little bit. They think about you. But you know what they think about? They think about how to hurt you. They think about how to inflict some pain on you. They think about how to stop you. They think about how to harm you. They think about, you know, they think about you in envy. They think about you in jealousy. And you don't want that. You don't want that. That's why I say trying to impress people is really too expensive. It's really too expensive. It's too costly. It's too costly to, to you yourself. You are going to pay high for it. And you don't want that to happen to you. So most people really don't care. So live your life. And you know, especially on the down, when you when you when you on the down downside, when you want to you know downgrade yourself, you want to you know reduce your some of your expenses, you want to uh, put some you know you know you know put some order in your life, and you are thinking, oh, people will be thinking that I, I used to live so high, I used to live in a bedroom in a five bedroom apartment or five bedroom house, and now I'm going to be back going back to an apartment. What will people think about me? But but people don't really think about. It. They have too many problems. The truth of the case, the truth of the matter is that in this life, too many people are engulfed in their own problems. If our world is a difficult world, it's a difficult world, it's a difficult world. Uh, world is not, life is not easy for a lot of people. Life is not easy. So people are busy thinking about their lives. People are busy trying to make a living for themselves. People are busy trying to, you know, upgrade their lives. That's just the reality. So they are not sitting down thinking about you. But if you parade your money too much before them, of course they will think about you because they will think. And when they think about you, they are thinking what they could get from you. That's just the truth. Most people thinking about you, they are only thinking that you will help them. They are thinking what they could get from you. They are thinking how they could, what trick they could play on you to get some money from your pocket. They are thinking of telling you some lies. They are thinking of crying for you, so for you to have mercy upon them, for you to pity them and to part with your money. That just you know, so so don't try to impress people who don't really care about you. They don't care about you. They are caring about themselves. That's the reality of things. They, you know, they are they are not caring about you. They are caring about themselves. They're not thinking about you. They are thinking about themselves. So that's just the way it is. So don't be afraid. The idea I'm trying to pass across is. Don't be afraid to downgrade, to cut down your expenses. Don't be afraid to live a humble life. 
Don't be afraid to live a modest life. Don't be afraid to move from that your big house that you have that's a liability for you to move to a smaller place and to get money, you know, to use that money and direct it for investment. Don't be afraid to, you know, take some people into your apartment if you have some extra room. Get people there, let them pay for it, and don't be afraid what people will say and say that oh, oh, you are making money, you know, it means it's poor or it means it's not rich. Well, it could be painful for you for a few days or for a few hours, but you know, but. Going in exchange, you get money, and when you get that money into investment, that will increase you, and you'll be able to go back to the bigger house anyway. Don't don't be afraid. People will think, oh, you are using such a bad car or something. Yeah, they could think like like that for a few minutes, uh, you know, for a few seconds. But people don't really. Most people never think more than two two twenty seconds at a time. You know, they think about you maybe for twenty seconds and they forget. <laughs> you know, look at uh, Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump has a lot of things people could talk about. Yeah, people talk about him for two minutes and forget. You know, if you know what I'm saying is that the life we are living, the world we are living in right now is a fast paced life. It's a fast paced life. So you know, so fast fast paced life. That is uh everybody is just um, too much in a hurry. Everybody is in a hurry too much. Everybody is running somewhere. And what that means is that they don't have time to think about you for long. They could think about you for a few minutes, but you know, they have too much of their challenges. And what I'm trying to say is that even all the people who are trying to stop uh, Donald Trump cannot stop him. Why? They, because it's not sticking to him. All the bad things people are talking about, it's not sticking to him. Why? Because people don't have time to go around and be thinking, oh, Donald Trump is bad, so let's go ahead. Not too many people have time to, you know, so it's not sticking. The same thing with, um, you no, know, Hillary Clinton. Everybody says she's bad, she's this, and, you know, and all those things are not sticking to people because people have, you know, because in the world of Facebook and, you know, social network, new, new, you know, new news come every second. So even as they have just talked about your news, I know that information is coming from left and right. So they don't really have time to, you know, sit down there and just be deliberating about you and how bad you are and how poor you are and how, you know, you are unfortunate you are. You know, you know, if they think about it, they have forgotten about it until somebody else comes to remind them. Then they forget again. So, and by the time they face their own pain and their own problems, they forget about you altogether. So, so, so don't ever worry about people's opinion. People's opinion are temporary. And they are too, they are too, you know, they, they are too insignificant anyway for you to, to build your life around people's opinion. So don't dress for people. Don't, don't dress for yourself. Don't, don't buy stuff for people, you know, to applaud you or to, you know, to talk good about you. You know, buy things that you can afford and save the rest and put the work, work the money to, for work. Let the money work for you and let it, you know, in, you know, so that you could have better uh, results and better you know, you know, wealth to be able to, you know, build a better future for yourself and be able to fulfill the will of God in your life. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, the bottom line, stop killing yourself. <laughs> stop killing yourself because of what you think people are thinking about you. Um, and, uh, Stop the envy, if you know. Stop the envy, and if 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 you even stop living living uh, living uh, more modestly, if you stop living more modestly, you know what? People will probably uh, people will probably just disc no. They will think you are just like them. They will think you are just an ordinary person like them. So uh, you know. So if you, I think there is a lot of benefit, a lot of uh, blessing in trying to actually humble yourself, in trying to be more humble, in trying to play the low key, because people will think that, oh, okay, it's not successful. So then you save yourself from some envy right there. And then they think that uh, you are just on their level, but they don't know that you have a lot of money working for you. Uh, you know, so they will not, you know, you know, they will not want to kill you or want to envy you or want to, you know, do some bad things to you. So there are some good things about, you know, downplaying things and about, you know, living the low key and, uh, you know, not trying to impress people and uh, not trying to kill yourself by thinking about what people are thinking about you. Public opinion is public opinion. The Bible says that why should we be afraid of people who could only kill your, your body, but they cannot do anything to your spirit. They cannot do anything to your, to your soul. We should rather be afraid of God who can kill both the body and the spirit. So, you know, 
You know, don't, don't, don't that's what Jesus was trying to say in that place is that don't be afraid of people, people's opinion. Don't be because people who are people, people are just people that have their breath in their nose, in their nostrils, and that means they could die at any time. And one thing with people is that people change so fast. No, nothing is permanent in life, but like change, you know, change. People change so fast. People could have one opinion about you today, and tomorrow they are already having another, another, another opinion. So people, you know, people. Uh, change their opinion all the time. So don't build your life about some some opinion that will soon change tomorrow anyway. And uh, people could think one thing one second and the next. You know we have about about uh, how many thousands? I, I don't I don't know. How, I think you know thousands, tens of thousands of thoughts. I can't remember the figure right now that come to our mind every day. So I mean the thoughts could be of good and it could be of bad. You don't care about anybody's thoughts. It is their problem. Let them think whatever they want to think. But you know what you want to do. You behave like Coco Chanel. You know what your goal, what your goal is. You know what your mission is in life. You know you want to please God. And for you to please God, you need to set yourself free from the dominion and the captivity of the system of this world. So let money work for you. Uh, and, and once money is work for you, uh, it will secure you. I mean, you know, you'll be able to, you know, go ahead and do what God wants you to do. Somebody says humility is security. Yes, it's true. Humility is security. So, so you know, like Coco Chanel said, I don't care what, what you are thinking about me. I don't even think about you in the first place. I have what to think about. I'm thinking about my purpose. I'm thinking about my vision. I'm thinking about my, my, my mission in life. Yeah, God has got a purpose and mission for each and every one of us. Let's rather focus on thinking about that than thinking about anybody's opinion and what they think about us. People will think anything they like. It's their freedom. We live in a free world. Let them think anything they want. But you think about your mission. You think about your destiny. You think about how to give better future for your life, for yourself, for your family, and for humanity. And you think about how to leave a better mark on, in, on the side of history than to think about what people are thinking about you. But better still, don't build your life. Don't build your reputation on what people are saying. So people are saying you should, you should, you are supposed to be you to have children. You are supposed to go and marry. You know, some people go and marry at the wrong time because. They are afraid of public opinion. Some people are going to borrow money to buy a car when they have not deserved it yet. They go and borrow money to buy a house when they have not worked for it yet. You know, so you are just, you know, putting yourself in bondage, putting yourself in debt because you want to, you know, to, 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 to please people or you want to look nice or look qualified or look good or look wealthy, you know, by people's standard. But... People don't care for you when you miss it and when you lose money and when you, you are down, then people will just be saying you are to blame. You have yourself to blame. And because you, you know, you are not supposed to follow them, they didn't put you by the hand, they didn't pull you by the hand, and they will say, Well, you have yourself to blame. So if you don't want yourself to be blamed for, you know, all kind of wrong decisions you are making, you know, just know that you are responsible for your own life. You are responsible for your own future. You are responsible for your decisions. So the decision you want to make is to, that you want to please God. You want to live for the kingdom of God and His righteousness for the expansion of the kingdom of God. And for you to do that, you must set yourself free from the bondage of work, from the bondage of money, from the dependency of trying to make a living, of, of uh, from the bondage of debt, uh, trying to pay for this, pay for that, pay for uh, rent, pay for a mortgage, pay for... Uh, you know, you know, insurance and that, that, that. So you want to downstream your expenses. You want to begin to uh, spend less. You want to cut a lot of unnecessary expenses, and you want to send all that money into doing something that you know into a place that the money will work for you, and then you could build a better future for yourself and face the calling of God for your life. Okay. Let's see a sweat liar is saying, yes, people never care about me. People only can talk. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I'm about to round up this message. So I want all of you to go ahead and uh, write your, I like to hear people's opinion at the end of the day. So I want to read your opinion about this teaching, what you are thinking about this teaching. And don't forget that you don't need to go to your timeline to, to press the share button if you have not paired the, paired, pressed the share button if you have not shared this look to your left right right of your screen i mean of your screen and you will see the human figure there and the sign of a man and uh, a plus 
press that press i mean plus and then you could you will see the option of share there and then you can share and uh yeah that will be that will help you to share without going to your timeline but i want to hear what you are thinking about these teachings are they helping you are they helpful uh, or they are not helpful do you think uh i should continue or not or what's your decision maybe you have some story maybe you have some testimonies write in a few words what you think and what is happening to you since you started listening to these so let's hear your thinking about this okay diana rayeva said you are precious to god he has counted every hair on your head thank you lisa says very good teaching much needed blessings uh oh look at your this, this message is so lifting okay oh joe says i'm enjoying your teaching sir very practical awesome okay i can hear me say this is very helpful pastor please keep sharing right grace says thank you for the wisdom humility and security right uh, Anto Wynn says, more, more, more. Okay. Kenneth said, this is a blessing. Tiger says, please continue. They are so helpful. All right. Uh, Bingpe says, you are responsible for your future. Yes. Well said, sir. All right. Christine says, wow, hallelujah. On point. Okay. Uh, then Lisa says, yes, God does have a mission for us. Never worry about others. Haters will always hate. Yes. <clears throat> and um, who is this? Matthew Paul says, Thank for these words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. May Jesus Christ shower you with more grace, love, and stay blessed by our heavenly Father. Okay, by Father Almighty. Right. Okay. Right. Who is that writing? Aline says this is a very powerful teaching. Formula says, please, sir, don't stop. Oh. <laughs> Formula doesn't want me to stop. Don't stop. Oh. I'm, I am using my quality time to listen to your message. Thank you so much and God bless you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Israel says, I'm blessed. OB or G Madu says the resonance has begun. Hallelujah. Thank God. Melika said God, this is a God sent message. And to Wins Harry say, bring yourself back. You are wanted. Okay. General Ezea Ku says, Amazing truth. Thank you, sir. Right. Ola Martin say, Well spoken, sir. The teaching is very helpful. What do we do? We we that all student loan and medical bills. Okay, we'll talk about that. I will get to that. I will get to how to deal with your debt. All right, I will get to how to deal with your debt. Uh, we are going gradually. Okay, Jedida or Jedidia Uluwa Yamifre says, Can you please share the steps you took in order to become a millionaire? Well, that's what I've been sharing all this while. If you have just come, if you are just here to join us for the first time, you might need to go and listen to the teachings that I've done for the past one week. And then you need to get this book. Uh, this is a book on how to become a millionaire, even though it's called Money Won't Make You Rich. If you don't have the book, order it from Amazon. All right. And then I also want to use the opportunity to talk about my mission. My next mission for life mission is to go and bring about transformation in Africa. And uh, I'm going back to Nigeria by the grace of God, maybe next year. And the idea is to take 2,000 people with me uh, to go and rebuild Africa. I have 200 people already from Ukraine, and I need another, uh, you know, 2,000 from all over the world. So it doesn't matter what country you are from. You can, if you want to join to go back to Africa to revive that country for us, you might want to get this, my book on Nigeria. But it's not just about Nigeria. It's about how to bring an impact to your country. So it's on Amazon as well, Nigeria and the leadership uh, question. And uh, also, uh, I need you to write to me if you are interested in joining my team and becoming a part of my team to Nigeria. And that is, uh, you have to write to, uh, to uh, Nigeria at sundayadelajafoundation.com. Nigeria at sundayadelajafoundation.com. So you, we will send you a letter and when, you receive, when we receive your letter, we are going to send you uh, 
you know, our own letter, what we, we were expecting from you and more detailed information. And uh, you can or you can write to me directly at Sunday at uh, you can write to me to pastor at godembassy.org. Pastor at godembassy.org. Okay, all I can hear me says, uh, Pastor, I'm happy to hear this. My office wants me to take a loan to buy a car that I will use for the office. I refuse. I don't want to live in debt. Brilliant. It's better to put that, that money into uh, some some place to work for you. And then, you know, you multiply it. Then you'll be able to buy it when you can afford it. Uh, Christina Bonder, private Christina. She says a very actual topic, a very necessary topic. Ernest Ebonk says, it's a very insightful teaching. Many of us always get worried about what other people think about us, which makes us do things beyond our capacity to please them, which eventually bring us problems. <laughs> please, what did he say? Please, what? Please, Pastor, keep up with the teaching. God bless you, sir. Okay. Maria Macanjola says, Internet. Okay, she said, thank you. I have the book. Ooh, congratulations. You got the book. Well, the books are on Amazon. You can go to Amazon and get any of my books, especially these two books. Uh, Angelique Kita said, I am blessed with this message because I was worried for others instead to be focused on my destiny and serve the kingdom of God. Very, very good. Uh, Uluwa Toyin said, I thought about the principles today and also sharing it with another set of people tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. That is one way to really make me happy. If you are going to take this teaching that I'm giving you and go and share with other people and begin to share it on the internet, to teach it to other people, and uh, it, will, it will really make not just me happy, it will make God happy. So if you have the possibility of taking these teachings and, you know, uh, share them with other people, Please go ahead and do that. You have the freedom to do that, please. Ibrahim Adeleke says, Pastor, sir, the two parts of your stop working for Uncle Sam has been stopped to be played on Facebook, sir. Oh, yeah? Okay, I didn't know that. Then we can put it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. Is it on Facebook? It is. No, you can go to YouTube. You can go to Sunday Adelaja Official on, on YouTube. And it, you, you know, stop working for Uncle Sam. You'll see it on my YouTube uh, channel. And, but I think it is still there in Facebook. There is a second playlist on Facebook. Okay, anyway, on, but you can get it on YouTube. On YouTube, go to my something on YouTube, you'll find it there. There are three parts of stop working for Uncle Sam, are three parts. So go and if you don't find it on YouTube, you can go find it on, uh, on, uh, uh, you know, if you don't find it on Facebook, you can go find it on YouTube. Akim Latifu said, thank you very much, Pastor, for all your teaching, really helping me as a young father. Well, thank God, thank God. Let me say, Pastor Sunday, this is not the kind of teaching to stop. It is enough to transform our generation. More grace to your elbow. By the way, Remy Adetunji, I wrote you to your inbox. Did you see my, my, my mail, that I, my message that I sent to your inbox? Because you wrote your testimony, your story. He has a fantastic story that he wrote after he read my book. And I wrote to him, you have not replied me, so I will expect your reply. Okay, and from Benny says, this is the message the world needs. And Prince Kingsley says, the message, this message is so helpful, please continue. Shinenye Shao says, hope those who are living a fake life will repent after hearing this. Well, well, that's it for now. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'll be... Yes, I'll be back tomorrow morning. If you don't know the time, I'm always back. I'm here every day in the morning, 7.30 a.m. UK time. Uh, 7.30 a.m. Nigerian time, 8.30 a.m. Uh, European time, 2.30 a.m. Eastern time in America. And, uh, you know, sorry that it's in the middle of the night for Americans, but that's just the way it is. And then tomorrow, 
in the evening, I'll be back at the same time. So nice, uh, nice uh, having all of you here today. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for being here. Blessings. Bye.